install FastAPI. So the first step is to install FastAPI in a folder. I have it installed already, so I'm not going to do it again. And then, um, so before we run the code, we got to have some code to run. So we're going to open it up in our editor. And I have one already made, uh, a, fi a pi main pi file. So you guys are going to want to make that as well. And what you want to do is go to first steps and then copy this block of line. That's that. And then you can just uh, go to that over here, copy this line, run it in your terminal, and then copy that, put it in your browser, put it in your browser, and it should say the message, hello world, and if you go back to it, and then change it to whatever you want, such as like, Hello, goodbye, and save it. It should automatically reload. As you can see here. So all you have to do is refresh, and it should change. All right, now that, that we have that out of the way, we'll get started on our front end React app. So you're gonna wanna go to the docs for React, copy this line, and open a new terminal. No, I have to just run the the line of code, and you can name it whatever. But I'm gonna just keep it as my app. This takes a while. So we're gonna just skip ahead. Boom, boom, boom. All right, we're back. It's done. So we're gonna wanna go into my app. Whoop. My app. And then follow the instructions. Yarn start. Or it might be just PM start for you. But mine is yarn start. Boom. All right, so you're gonna wanna go to here. Here. And And go into my app. Dang it. And then open it in the code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. You don't need that. All right, so go into the source folder, go locate app. This is cool. We'll, we'll delete that and that and change this to say like was and then if you look and it'll automatically reload boom it's changed so that's pretty cool 
and then so for here uh, inside the source folder make a new one call it components or component uh, whatever and then inside here make a new folder we'll call it message.js and then inside message.js we're gonna make a new functional component like that uh, there's a there's an extension for that you guys can look it up I, I forgot what it was called I think it's called it's this one right here okay so back here on it I'll show you how it works we could just type like hello here save it go back to app we gotta import the message um, from from the components folder com and then message and then we can just go and then just put message as a component and then if you check it should read what we have in our message component which is it should read what it ha we have in our message component which is um, hello So what we're going to try to do is have a get request that requests something from our back end like the message here, hello goodbye, and receive it here and have it print out hello goodbye here. I'm going to make a couple tabs here, create a const, and then set it to result and set result result and equal that to use state no all right k we're also gonna need use effect here save all that also if you go here go to we're gonna need to install Axios you guys can use whatever yarn npm to install Axios um to make the get request so we'll go here we'll go to it's my app. We're going to add Axios. And then, so after Axios is installed, we're going to make a const message equals and make this function where we're going to try. We're gonna make it axios.get. We're gonna make a get request from a key. All right, paste that there. And then we're gonna let result equal the data from the request and then we're going to set result what is that set result equal 
or set result to the result. And then, yeah, close it with the cat. Okay. All right, then we're gonna need to do a use effect. Do message. All right. And then we want to return the result. Okay, so we have the request, we're setting result to result, and we're then we're returning result. So, and then here we got the component, so it should work now. And the result is not printing, and that is expected because if you look here, there's a it's blocked by course policy. So basically, if you look in the docs, there's like a section for middleware and cores. And then if it has a different origin than the front end, yeah, you can read through it, but it's, it's an easy fix. I don't want to type it out, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. You have to import this library, specify the origin, and then set the allow origins, and then you can mess around with the header types and the methods. But if you save that, and then you go back and check, and refresh, no error, and it's not printing still. Add function to network connection. Oh, is it not running? All right, run the server first. Run Uvicorn. All right, and it should work now. If you refresh, no errors, and you got a hello, goodbye. And you can also change it to like whatever. Like, let's say you have like some stuff running in the back end where like you, and then like it calculates something and then it returns like, Da 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 num big number. If you refresh, it should be the big number, and you can also like return like data frame. Like you can do a bunch of stuff with this. So yeah, that's that.